Are you looking to improve your live stream, video conference, class, webinar, video call quality, and you don't really have a great webcam, or you're looking at the prices of capture cards on the market and being appalled by them like I am, because holy balls. <laughs> well, do you also have a Canon camera? I think this is my 6D Mark II I've had for a while. Canon has just officially released a beta utility, which allows you to use your Canon DSLR and a couple other cameras as a webcam, which they've never done before. Your move, webcam manufacturers. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set it up and use it, as well as you know some limitations it might have and things like that. Let's jump in. I'm Epos Vox, your stream professor, and today we're taking a look at Canon's EOS webcam utility for Windows beta. Now it supports this list of cameras, and nothing else officially because you would download it on a per camera basis so it doesn't have some of the older ones like a t5i or a 70d but it does have a lot of the cameras including the eos r line the 6d mark ii which i have here and even one of the power shot cameras i was interested in hearing so you need a couple things to get started you need your camera itself which i have my 6d mark ii you need a usb cable for your camera you need to open up the little flap on the side and see which kind of usb cable you need if you have a newer one like the EOS R or RP, you need a USB type C to type A cable and then to use a USB 3.0 port on your computer. In the case of my 6D Mark II, it only has a mini USB port. So I'm just gonna be using a mini USB 2.0 cable here. I don't have many of these left because nothing hardly uses them anymore. This one's really short, we'll make it work. And then of course you'll need some sort of tripod or whatever and you'll want lighting so that your video looks good because most cameras need proper lighting. So be it studio lighting or an open window, Need some sort of lighting that actually makes you look nice on camera. If you're using a DSLR, you should hopefully know this already. So head on over to the link in the video description down below, which will take you to the overall page for the EOS webcam beta. And then you need to choose your camera from the list, be it the M50, M200, EOS R, a couple of the PowerShot cameras, or some of the Rebel or other EOS line. So for example, mine is the 6D Mark II. I'm going to click that. And then you go to the downloads page, you don't apply for an online survey. You find Canon EOS webcam beta for Windows and go ahead and click download. It's gonna give you a zip file. Go ahead and open that up in your favorite unzipping utility or it'll just open in Windows by default. And then go ahead and double click on the EOS webcam utility installer. Next, I agree. Next, next. Go ahead and get rid of my browser windows here. Wait for this to install. You may need to approve UAC prompts or whatever for admin access. There you go, hit close. And now you must restart your computer in order to start using this. I know, it sucks. All right, the next step once you've restarted your computer is to turn on your camera. Turn it on to movie mode, which for me is by setting it to manual and then setting it to movie instead of picture taking mode. Plug in the USB cable to your camera and then to your computer. Again, if you're on a newer camera with USB Type-C, you do want to be using a USB 3.0 port on your computer. You'll see it pops up that it's detecting your camera and that it's installing it. You get a little notification for it. It is set up and ready. Now, if you want to add the Canon camera as your webcam for your desired streaming application, for example, I am using OBS Studio in this example, then go ahead and launch your software add a new video device. So in OBS, it'll be plus video capture device. I'm going to call this Canon 60 MKII for Canon 60 Mark II. Hit OK. And then from the devices list here, you choose EOS webcam utility beta. So I would recommend leaving it on device default. You can choose custom, but then you only have two options and neither of them seem super desirable. And it, it's not cooperating with me manually typing in settings whatsoever. Uh, but it looks like it does 1024 by 576 at 30 FPS from my 6D Mark II specifically here. This may differ based on your camera. A USB 3.0 web or camera is going to support much higher quality modes. This is a USB 2.01. And then I would change color space to Rec 709. And for color range, I would leave on default because it's probably going to load in what's best for it. Give it a second here. And there we go. It has loaded in the result from my camera. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the screen because it is lowering, like I said, loading a lower resolution. But we do have an image straight out of my Canon camera with dual pixel autofocus enabled. 
doesn't look too bad obviously my lighting's a little off because it's facing the wrong way but that's fine so something you may notice is my color isn't exactly right in this camera and that's because i typically use a LUT. now if you're using obs studio specifically you can actually use a LUT with your camera so if you have it set to a specific color mode or whatever and you want to modify it from there in obs you can right click it go to filters and then under effect filters click plus apply LUT, and you can use dot cube or dot png LUTs. i click okay and then find the LUT that i work with And there we go that's a little bit better you will need of course to tweak your exposure and your white balance settings and all of that in order to best meet your current environment there we go that looks about right for me and now we have a video feed with our camera coming in now something you will notice in my instance specifically it is not loading in audio there's no audio coming through here so i'm going to mute out this device at least in obs studio it does not seem to load any audio from your camera And trying to choose a custom audio device it does not look like the eos eos webcam utility beta registers an audio device at all so there's nothing to choose from to get audio coming from this camera you will have to use audio from an external source so that's worth keeping in mind a couple other limitations you might want to keep note of is it doesn't seem to work in the windows camera app so you can't use it for that kind of basic recordings and I ran into an issue here with it not loading in, in Discord. I will try it again real quick here now that I know it's working in OBS. But using it in Discord, at least testing the preview, I'm getting a black screen. It's not compatible, but that's probably Discord not expecting what it's working with. We're going to try Skype here real quick. Okay, in Skype, okay, for Skype, you click the three dots, go to settings, then go to audio video, and then under camera, of course, it doesn't show up at all. <laughs> <sighs> that's disappointing so doing some testing with this in obs studio there seems to be of course as expected a slight delay coming from the camera to your audio in real time however the delay does not seem to be very significant it actually seems totally fine and would be totally usable for a lot of sources i am pretty annoyed that there's no audio coming in from the camera so you can't like slap on a microphone and get audio that way uh, that will make the setup a little bit less convenient for a lot of people and every once in a while as i'm using this as a camera with usb 2.0 a camera with usb 3 will be much faster but with my camera i do get random like frame drops from time to time and i am capped out at 30 frames per second so what i recommend the canon eos utility beta to you for using with your stuff yes and no depending on which camera you have and its connection method and things like that your experience will vary a little bit in terms of performance and quality i think the quality from this is fine it's passable it's usable it's an upgrade over webcams for sure even if it's lower resolution than i would prefer the problem comes in the application support even after rebooting discord doesn't seem to want to cooperate with the signal from it and skype won't detect it at all so depending on which video calling or conferencing app you may have trouble now and the windows 10 camera app won't even show it as either now if you have a live streaming program like obs xsplit wirecast and maybe vmix the others prior to vmix at least will all most likely accept this fine and you won't have any issues but programs that need like specific setups in order to approve cameras or anything like that are not going to recognize the eos utility beta and kind of not work out for you so i did just want to say that i completely applaud canon for making this happen with basically a snap of their fingers and they've probably been developing on this for the entire month that we've all been locked down in quarantine and what have you to immediately just turn so many canon cameras into webcams just like that this really i hope lights a fire under the butts of webcam manufacturers because this is what we've been asking for for a long time and it's only in beta so the issues that i have run into can be improved upon can be updated can be fixed and they can even add more support for other cameras as time goes as with rtx voice and a lot of things that i have covered on the channel a lot of companies are just getting this stuff out the door as quickly as possible to satisfy work from home people and give them options to work with and it doesn't mean that they will stay in the state that they're currently in so these you know this app isn't or this add-on isn't really in great shape imo at the moment but they will keep working on it and it will improve so i give canon huge kudos for actually doing this this isn't something i would have expected um and i do hope that you temper your expectations that again it's just a beta they're getting there but do give feedback and hopefully we'll see a lot more from this and hopefully this does encourage webcam manufacturers to step it up because logitech's most recent offering was not up to par imo 
And if you're looking for a camera for your live streams and this supports the app that you're using, you can get a Canon T6 or SL2 or what have you for significantly cheaper than a lot of the cameras I've been recommending because they haven't been viable as streaming cameras before. So while it's still not the best experience and you have to weigh whether you're investing your money in the right options and things like that, again, keep an eye on the channel on Monday for more thoughts about this. This certainly opens the doors for a lot more of what you can do with these cheaper DSLRs. I would recommend picking one up if this is what you need. If you don't have a capture card right now or a camera that provides clean HDMI out, this is certainly an option that I would recommend you try out first. Another one is Sparko Cam. I can make a separate video on that if desired. From what I've been able to tell, the results are mostly the same as this, so keep that in mind. But if you're looking for options, this is one such option, and so is Sparko Cam. Hope this video was helpful for you. Get out there, make something awesome, or just chat with your friends or your classmates or your students or whoever you're working with. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. I will have a video coming next week about not overpaying for capture cards or cameras for streaming or what have you and some alternative recommendations and just some thoughts to share. So keep, in a, keep a lookout for that on the channel. I'm Eiffel's Vox, your stream professor. I'll see you next time.